Hello people of the internet, today I am bringing you a long awaited video of art from independent artists. If this video is too long or chunky I'm going to have all of the little sections in the description box below so you can go to the relevant section that you would like to look at because there's going to be illustrators, writers, filmmakers, artists, photographers, musicians. This video is just going to be one massive block of arty, independent -y goodness. So first section we're going to start with is illustrators. First illustrator is Nyasa Hind. Nyasa's style is very much inspired by the jungle and she has a certain very subtle style of blending colours that, but they're very bright, they're very pigmented and vibrant so it gives her work a sort of gentle punch if that makes sense. She's brilliant to work with, I commissioned her to do some channel art for me which was wonderful. She has her own website, her own Instagram and just please 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 go support her okay, she's fantastic. Second illustrator you should support is Sylvie or Sylvie of the Woods. Sylvie's art is largely focused on the natural world, uh, particularly the beach in Cornwall. I love her style, it's sort of impressionist as well, like quite subtly blended together with the colours but she uses quite vibrant teals and greens to really sort of bring the natural environment a sort of artistic flair and sparkle. It sort of shows you how artists see the world. If you'd like to purchase Sylvie's prints there will be a link in the description box to a tweet where she could details her PayPal and you can send her the money and she will send you the art. Number three on my list of illustrators is a dear friend of mine Hattie Clark. Now Hattie or Hattie the Pirate is an illustrator based in Liverpool. I personally love Hattie's style of artwork because it's so bright and stylized and distinctive. All of her artwork is extremely intelligent, endearing and it's just there's this one print that she has of loads of women and they're all of completely different ethnicities, completely different sexualities. It was just so encouraging and beautiful to see. So if you want to see some more from Hattie, there she is. Illustrator number four on the list is Ed Stockham. Some of you might know Ed from the ball throwing video on YouTube, I'll link it down below, or from illustrating works like Graffiti by Savannah Brown, but Ed really is an artist in his own right. This is Ed's book that you can get, it was on sale at Summer in the City. These are just what Ed has just been drawing on a daily basis, so you really do get an insight into how he sees the world. Another thing I thought I would share with you is that it was my birthday very recently and Ed was kind enough to send me a print that I saw on his Instagram and I will be hanging this on my wall to add to my little collection of art behind me there. Right, so that's the illustrators done, now time to move on to the writers slash creators. First up is Guy Larson. Now Guy is the creative director behind Intertwined by Dodie. He has his own channel and his own production company called Penny4. Guy has a very distinctive sort of storybook Tim Burton, Edward Gorey-ish kind of style and the work that he does is meant to be thought provoking and just dark but in a weird and wonderful way. And the second writer I'm going to be plugging is Jake Pemberton. Jake is a writer of dark, gory, funny sketches. Jake has a very fast paced, aggressive style of editing that is, you know, it's transparent in all of his work um, and he has a very unique way of sort of bringing darker or perhaps less palatable storylines to the surface through comedy and dark humour. He did a miniseries called The Perluccios about a cat crime family. Um, highly recommend watching both of those but if you want to see more from Jake his YouTube channel will be in the description. Right, that's the writers done. Time for the photographers! Hey! The first photographer I'd like to talk about is George Young. In this sort of internet photographer community, George is very well known for starting a movement called hashtag support creatives. So if you look at the Twitter hashtag support creators, George will mainly be the one facilitating discussions and dialogue between creators from different backgrounds and different communities. However, George is also well known for the way that he treats light. Now George works primarily in very dark settings because he's a music photographer. So the magic that he can pull in situations with very tricky flat light and just pull out dimension and detail in his work, it's absolutely beautiful. If you want to go check out more of his stuff, his website will be in the description, as will his Twitter. He's currently based in Leeds, so if anybody would like to work with a photographer in Leeds, you can hit him up. Go, go, go. Second photographer I'd like to plug is Anna Holling. Anna has a very precise focus when it comes to her images. They're very much naturalistic, almost underexposed, a little bit desaturated, but her work is honestly stunning. Like the colour, the composition, and her work has a kind of serenity that you wouldn't expect from, you know, 
landscapes such as waves crashing on a seashore or a busy city and this is particularly evident in her portraits as well the portraits that she captures of people it feels like you're sort of being noticed by the person in the portrait rather than them sort of being there and you get to observe them it's rather like they're noticing you which is something that I've sort of picked up from her work if you'd like to purchase or are interested in some of Anna's work her website will be in the description as will her Instagram and Twitter Ooh. so we've had illustrators writers and photographers we're gonna take a quick break we're gonna talk about someone who's not necessarily an artist in one particular form of media but more of a multimodal artists and that is Beth Boulevard. Beth makes short films that she regularly uploads to YouTube but she has a very distinct sort of gothic gritty pastelized style and she isn't afraid to talk about topics that are you know a little bit darker. I worked with Beth recently to help promote some of her merchandise that she's releasing. This is a t-shirt that I ordered from Beth's store before it was released. It says work of art or a piece of work on it and I think that's really interesting in terms of referring to how we view women and femininity. So many great things are going to be coming from her. If you haven't subscribed to her already you should be and I'm going to have her link to her art shop down in the description. So now we've plugged Beth and we've talked about illustrators, writers and photographers we're gonna go on to Instagram artists. We're gonna start off with Tyler Fader. Tyler Fader's work often represents marginalized groups particularly marginalized women and queer people. It's just so refreshing to see art that's so peaceful distinctive and unique but still you know represents a wide variety of people another Instagram artist I really like is Ruby etc Ruby has a certain sort of frenetic frantic style of drawing which makes you think that it was drawn either in a rush or in a fit of anxiety but it's mainly representative of the experience of being in your early 20s and having to face up to adulthood and responsibility and not really knowing what you're doing with it so if you'd like to have a look at some of Ruby's work or purchase her book I'll have those links in the description box below. Another Instagram artist in that same vein is by Mari Andrew. I think that her art is mainly a part of her coming to terms with what her life has brought her and what it's going to be in the future and that's really refreshing and encouraging to see particularly if you're someone like myself with chronic anxiety who is terrified of what the world may bring. Another Instagram artist you should look at is Liana Fink. Her work requires a lot more effort from the viewer or the experiencer um, but I would definitely say that it has that same sort of meaningful existentialist theme despite being so abstract and minimal so check out Liana Fink and the last Instagram artist and by far not the least is Celeste Mountjoy or at Filthy Ratbag. She's an independent artist in Australia and her work is some of the most sarcastic, savage <laughs> artwork I've ever seen in my life. She is fearless in her artwork. She draws people with mouse heads. She draws people completely naked. And her artwork is incredible. I just recommend that you take a look. I don't know if she has an online store yet, but if she does, you bet it will be in the description. And finally, we have musicians. There are only gonna be three musicians in this category. First of all, we have Susvarman. His work is really sort of lo-fi chill. If you enjoy like the lo-fi radio um, sessions that YouTube generates, then you'll enjoy his stuff. But it's all completely done in his own bedroom. He does all of the work himself, all of the looping, all of the timing, all of the sampling. Varman does it. And it's incredible what he comes up with. So highly, highly recommend purchasing his work using it in your videos, crediting him, get this kid famous so that he can, you know, throw a massive party and have us all invited. Second YouTube musician is Hayley Blace. Hayley has such an ethereal, painful, beautiful voice. Her music is so simplistic, but she uses synthesizers, she uses harmonies, just to talk sort of painfully and woefully about such melancholy, almost nostalgic topics. So if you can, go and check out Hayley Blaze. She has an EP available on Spotify, but if you want to see more of her work, then check out her discography on Bandcamp. And the last artist in this video... Wait! 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 Hello! Hi! We forgot one. As I was editing, I realized I'd left out one of the most crucial people that could probably be in this video. Bonus content, everyone. Welcome to musician number four, and that is Hell. Hell is an independent musician. She's also a poet. She has a YouTube channel. She has a Twitter. Hell's way with words is just 
cutting and brutal and witty and funny and heartbreaking. All of these incredibly harsh truths are sort of offset by her way with the ukulele. And I highly recommend you go check out her YouTube channel, Not A Notion, where she has collabed with other poets, <coughs> myself. And she has also got an EP out called Romantically Stunted, which you should go check out on Spotify or buy it on Apple or Bandcamp. And the last musician and the last artist in this video is Greta Isaac. She's an incredible vocalist. She treats harmony and texture so well in all of her tracks. This is kind of why they take so long to be released, but sort of the gap between each track being released is enough that you can fully digest the meaning of each one. It's very much an ongoing journey. So if you're interested, please go check out Greta Isaac on Spotify, on iTunes. Just support the artists, yay. So that's it, that's the artist video. I'm glad you stuck around for all of it. Again, I don't know what you guys want to see next. So if you have any suggestions, please put them in the description bar below. If you check out any of these artists and you have any opinions, please, please, please tell them about it. Give them feedback, give them input so that they know that their work is being appreciated. And if you liked it, put it in the comments below and tell me how, what you liked about their work and if you have any recommendations for independent artists, shove it in there. Let's all have a little, little party of independent art so that we can support people who deserve it. Right, beautiful. I will see you when I see you and yeah. Thanks for sticking around.